In today's video, I thought I would show you how I make these Christmas stockings that are designed by Juju Designs and how I do them in my embroidery machine, my 550E Janome. And I'm going to take you through it step by step. These are very easy to do. And if you've never done an in the hoop project before, this might be one that will get your feet wet because it is very easy. Now, you can, it does come with instructions that you print out. And here it is here, and it shows you exactly step by step, by way of pictures, how you set everything up. And just read them carefully and you won't have any problem. But I'm going to take you through this on this video. So first of all, this does have different sizes depending on what hoops you have available. I'm going to make the largest one, which says it takes a 10 by 16 inch hoop. And... We also have a list of the materials we need in this chart, and it shows you what you need for the 10 by 16. So it says that we need a piece of batting. I'm using Battleizer that measures 11 and 3 quarter inches by 17 and a quarter. I need fabric for the bottom, and there's the measurements for it. I need top fabric. I need a lining and back fabric. That sounds a little confusing because it says or cut two, but I'll explain that when I show you how to do this. And you need a lining fabric. So you have all of those measurements out there. And what I have done, and just let me get this out of the way. And what I have done is I've already prepared my materials. I'll talk about the masking tape and the ribbon in a moment. So it says that I need an 11 and 3 quarters by 17 and a quarter piece of batting. Now, as long as it can be bigger than that, if you wish, you can rough cut it because you will be trimming this off later. Um, but there's my piece of batting and I need a piece for the bottom of the sock. And what we're talking about here, let me just get the sock in view. We're talking about this piece here. We need a piece of fabric for the top. And that's my top fabric. That's this piece along here. I need a piece of fabric for the uh, backing and lining. And that's this piece here. And what we're talking about is this piece on the back. But this is a lined sock. So if you look inside, there's also a piece in there. This piece is actually doubled over. This will make more sense to you when we get it on the machine. And then we need uh, a lining piece of fabric. And this is going to be my lining piece of fabric. Now, these additional things over here, you need a ribbon for hanging it up. So if you look on my sample, there's the hanging ribbon. And masking tape is a good thing to have for this because you'll need to uh, tape down that little piece of ribbon so it doesn't get caught in your seam allowances. And again, this is something you'll see when I'm actually doing it. So don't worry if you don't understand that at the moment. Okay, so I have all of my materials organized here, ready to go. So the next thing I need to do is I have to put some stabilizer and I'll be using one sheet of tearaway stabilizer in this. Now you could use no-show mesh as well. I wouldn't use a water soluble because you're probably not going to uh, put these in water and wash them out. Uh, you might, so you could use that as well. But I'm using the tearaway because it will be right inside hidden in the layers of the sock and it does give my fabric and the sock a little bit more uh, stability with it. So I'm going to show you how I do that in just a moment. So I have my largest hoop out here and I'm going to hoop some tearaway stabilizer into this. Let's get the hoop turned around the right way. So I just put that in, put my top piece of the hoop on to this. And I think I've got that turned the wrong way. I do. These parts of the hoop fit only one way, so you can't get them in the wrong way. Clamp it. And I've adjusted my clamps and everything for this already beforehand. And that's all I need to do. Now what I have to do is I have to put it onto the embroider machine. And I'm going to stitch out an outline that will show me exactly where I need to put my batting down. And as I said, I'm using Battleizer. It's a little denser type of batting and I find it's 
the best for things like this or for table runners or for table toppers, things like that. So let me get this hooked up to the machine and show you what the next stage is. Okay, so I have my hoop in the machine and I have my thread threaded. Now this one advantage of this pattern too is there's very few color changes in this. In fact, you can use one thread throughout this whole thing because all of the sewing is going to be buried in your seam allowances with the exception of the embroidery across the top of the sock. For that, you'll want to pick a color. Oh, that and the quilting on the sock itself. So I just have a black thread in here. And what I'm going to do right now is turn on the machine and it's going to draw me out uh, a placement line so I know where to put my batting. And it's going to look like the shape of the sock. So here we go. So you can see this is just doing a simple stitch outlining the sock so I know where to place my batting so that I know that I have enough batting to cover that whole outline. And it's coming up to the finish point. Okay, so now I can lay down my piece of batting. So I'm just going to raise my foot. I'm just going to move this thread out of the way. And lay this down here. Get it underneath the presser foot. And you see I have more than enough. And that's okay, because you want to have more than you need, not less. And... I'm, the machine's going to do the same thing again. It's going to do what they call a tack down stitch. Oops, put down the foot. I'm just going to move that down so you can see. Now I have my machine set at the lowest setting. And I've been doing that a lot lately because I find, although it takes longer to do some of the projects when you have it at the lowest speed setting, um, you have less problems with, in certain designs, uh, having your thread uh, jam or get a bird's nest on the back of it or just break. Now, in this one's case, I could do it faster because there isn't any intricate, really, designs that it has to do, with the exception of probably the actual embroidery of the words Merry Christmas. But I'm just going to leave it at this speed right now because I'm comfortable with that. Now, it does a double stitch line here. Sort of reinforces it because I will be tugging on the batting as I cut it away. And you'll see that in a moment when this is done, how that works. Um, but this is a good thing. And uh, yeah, you want to do that. this away so you can see it just a little better. When you first get your embroidery machine, you'll stand over it for hours watching it do its thing because it's fascinating. Okay, so it's coming up to finishing this round of stitching and you can see we have the sock all drawn out here. So the next thing we have to do is take it off the machine and then trim around the um, stitch line. So I'm just raise my presser foot, slide this out, and I'm going to move you around so you can see this a little better. There we have it. And I'm going to grab my duck bill scissors for this. 
And this is what I'm talking about. These are duckbill. These make trimming your uh, pieces really easy. These are good for applique. So, and they're often referred to as applique scissors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and get as close as I can without cutting it, my tack down line. And then I just gent gently tug on the batting and it almost cuts itself in the sense that I don't really have to guide the scissors except just to keep them close because the motion of tugging gently because you don't want to pull it out of your hoop as you do this basically keeps your scissors exactly where you want them for cutting. And we're leaving about an eighth of an inch, roughly, of batting on the outside of the sewn line, which will get buried in the other pieces. So there's our scrap. And so that part is done. Now the next part says in the instructions, which I have right here, says run placement line that separates the top of the stocking from the bottom. And they show you a little diagram right there. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to put it back on to the machine. I'll just turn you around so you can see the machine. Okay, I'm not gonna change thread. I don't need to. And so just position you a little better. So now it's going to do a stitch line right across here to separate the bottom from the top of the stocking. So what we have to do next, according to instructions, is take our bottom fabric and just place it on top of here. In fact, I have a piece cut big enough, I'm going to cover the whole thing, just like I did with the batting, and then we trim it away. But before I do that, I want to show you something. My fabric is very, very wrinkly, so I need to press this out because I don't want those wrinkles to get caught under my stitching because then I'm going to have a pucker. So I'm gonna do that and lay it down on top of this and I'll be back. So the fabric's been pressed and now I have it laid on top of my hoop and I've uh, smoothed it out, making sure there's no little wrinkles or little bulges. And I'm gonna set the machine to start and it's going to stitch out that pattern of the sock, the bottom half of the sock that we saw a moment ago. Now sometimes it always helps just take your hand to smooth things out. Keep your hands well away from the needle. That goes without saying. Ooh, that was a weird noise. My bobbin's probably getting low. Sometimes when the bobbin gets low, there's a little catch up on it. Not a, nothing to worry about. So, do I starch my fabric before I put it down or use some sort of uh, pressing agent on it? Yes and no. If it was a real flimsy fabric, I would. This is a very good fabric, so I don't need to. And of course, it's going to do this stitch a second time around because we're going to be cutting some of this fabric, not all of it, away from this. And again, it just anchors it very nicely so that you can get a nice, even cut. So you can see, so far, so good. This is not complicated at all. Just follow the instructions. 
when you've done many of these, you could probably disregard the instructions because you'll know how to do it. Okay, it's finishing off here with a lockdown stitch. And it's just moving to the next position. But before we do the next thing, we need to trim this fabric a little bit. And if you take a look here, let me turn you this way. In the instructions, what we just did was this top part. Now it says trim away excess fabric is shown. So we're just going to trim it from below the stitch line that it made that marks off where the cuff of the sock will go. We don't need to worry about what's on the side here because you're going to trim that after everything is done and you're not going to see the seam. It's going to get turned in inside out. Well, inside out, right side out, whichever. You'll see. So I'll show you how I trim this in just a second. So you can see that I've trimmed away from the stocking top but I've left all of these around the outside because that'll just make things easier when we cut it down for the seam allowance. Now it's going to do the, uh, the quilting on the sock bottom itself. So I've changed my thread to a goldy yellow uh, color. In fact, I don't think I want a goldy yellow color on this one. Or do I? No, I think I want something a little darker. So I'm gonna change the thread to the red color. Okay, I have switched my thread over from gold to red because I think that'll show up better on here. And I'm all ready to go for the actual quilting on the bottom of the sock. Now what I was doing there was just taking the uh, leader piece of the thread and pulling it out from underneath my stitching. You should really turn off your machine before doing something like that. So don't do as I say, do as I do. Or in this case, maybe do as I say. So you can see it's doing a very simple quilting design. This particular pattern came with four different quilt designs. This one is basically just a crisscross sort of thing. And this is why you have the battleizer or the batting uh, layer, because this will make your quilting a little bit puffier. So this takes a few minutes to do. So I'm going to turn this off in just a second and come back to it when it's finished for you to see the end result of this. And then we'll press on to the next thing that we're going to be doing. The next stage in the process is to take your stocking top which is going to go, let me get you in here, go into this space. And you. we have a guideline that was stitched earlier. So what you do is you take your fabric. This is my fabric. You'll notice I have more than I need. Probably a little bit of overkill, but that's okay. So you lay this down and you want it to cover that line. You're putting it face down, um, right side down. You want it to cover that line, just go above that line by about a quarter of an inch. Because what's going to happen is there's going to be a stitch drawn across here, sewn across here, and then we're going to fold this fabric back and then it'll be tacked down. So that way you don't see any of the stitching at all. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Now you'll notice that I left my red thread in. It doesn't really matter because no one's going to see this stitching. I could switch it out to the black, but really, that's just an extra step that I don't need to bother with. Now that has finished that, and what we're going to do is do the tack down. But before we do that, we need to take this piece of fabric and fold it up so it covers completely the area that was marked out for the stocking top for the cuff and you just bring it over fold it up against that stitch line it's now hidden give it a little finger press and do the stitch down or the tack down as they call it then put the foot down would help
And it's also, you probably can't see it, but if we watch over here, there's a little line of stitching that it's putting off to the side. And it's doing that because that will be important later on when we put down the lining and the backing. It's just a guideline. It will not appear in the final product because it will be uh, stitched into the seam allowances. Okay, so our piece is tacked down now. Uh, we don't really have to do anything about cutting this away. We could, but we're just going to leave it uh, for now. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to check my double check to make sure I'm not lying to you about that. And yeah. Now at this point, it says we can customize the top. And what that means is the writing we might want here. It could be somebody's name. In my case, I'm using Merry Christmas. And I have already created that in this program. Now I want to switch out my thread because I want to do it in gold across here, in a yellowy gold. So I'm going to switch my thread colors right now and set up for that. Okay, so now at this stage, the uh, machine is going to embroider Merry Christmas across the cuff. So we'll just get this started. And I've changed the color of the thread as I already mentioned. Now, I'm just going to stop it for a second because you can see the tail of the thread is getting, oops, sorry about that, it just bumped you, is getting um, caught in this. So, and that happens. So I just cut that off and carry on. So this takes a bit of time. It takes about 10 minutes to do this part of it. And the next stage after this is where we're going to start laying down the fabric for doing the backing and the lining with all of this. So I'll show you that. I'll show you what the end product of this looks like, and then I'll show you that next stage then. Okay, so the stitching for the Merry Christmas is all done, as you can see. So the next thing is to put down a placement line for my ribbon. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So now I know exactly where to put the placement ribbon. So I'm taking a piece of ribbon. As you can see, I have one right here. And it's about six inches long. I'm just folding it in half. And I'm taking the raw ends and I'm placing them along that line and over the edge. Don't have to worry about this little tail piece sticking out because that'll get buried in the seam allowance. Now, this is where your tape would come in handy. I'm going to hold it down with my finger, which probably isn't the best idea, but here we go. So when this gets turned uh, in back to the right sides out, and you'll understand that in a minute, that ribbon will be peeking out from the edge um, and you won't see those tails. So what I need to do next is a couple of things. One, I'm going to take a piece of masking tape and I'm going to just tape it down lightly over that ribbon to hold it down and so it stays on the inside of my outside stitching lines when this gets sewn. And now we're going to take the backing fabric. So I'm going to move you around so you can see what I'm talking about. So my backing fabric is this blue and this is the largest piece of the fabric that you had to cut. Now you could do this in two pieces. I did it, did it in one and I have folded it in half as you can see. So let's get this folded up properly again. Now, in the case of this piece of fabric, it's a gradient. You see, I have lighter and darker. I want the darker actually to be on the outside of, um, well, actually it doesn't matter because this is going to be inside my sock. So I don't have to worry about that. So what I want to do is I take this folded line and remember those two little lines I said that were stitched on either side of the stocking top. Well, this is 
where you want to place this. So let me turn you around here so you can see what I'm talking about. So there is a line stitched here. Just a little bit more. A line stitched here and a line stitched here. And those are my guides for the top of this. So I want to take the folded edge of my fabric, lay it on top, and then place it. And this is covering up that whole sock stitch line and place it right so that the fold is on that one line on that side. And the fold is on the line. If I can find the line, line is right under there, the ribbon. Now you see that the ribbon is on the inside of this now as well. And that's why we taped it down. In fact, I'm just going to move it over a little bit because I don't want this to go over top of the ribbon edge. So lining that up, smoothing out the creases and wrinkles, making sure it's covering where it's supposed to. Ooh, it's a little close over there. Better pull it over a little bit here. Again, adjusting this at the top. Okay. Just double checking here. Sorry, my arm's in the way, I know. Yep, that's good. One enough for a quarter inch seam allowance when I cut all the way around this. This isn't hard. I'm just making it seem hard because I'm fiddling. Okay, so now I can stitch the next series of stitches. And I'm not even changing my thread because no one's going to see what color of thread I use. I'm just smoothing it. Make sure I don't have any bumps or wrinkles. And it does this twice. That's just for security's sake. So the next thing that's going to happen is I'm going to put my last piece of fabric, which will be the lining piece, with the right side down on top of this so it covers all of that stitch line and let it sew that. So I'll show you that in just a second. And so this is the last piece of fabric. It's the lining. It's going pretty side or right side down and it's going over top of the whole thing so that that last stitch line is covered with lots of room at the top bottom and at the sides for when we trim this up and we let it go now this will leave a gap right in this area here for turning purposes and you'll see what I mean by that in just a moment so this is going to go all the way around. I believe it goes around twice or to make sure it's really well secured. And then I'm going to take the hoop off the machine, take this whole piece out of the hoop, and I'm going to trim a quarter inch of the way. Well, I'm going to pull off the tearaway stabilizer first, and then I'm going to cut a quarter inch of the way away from the outside stitch lines. And we're going to turn it, but I'll show you that. Okay, all the stitching is done. All we have to do is take it out of the hoop, trim it up, and uh, turn it right side out. So, let's get it, up, get it out of the hoop first. Move this out of our way. Turn this over, and now we can tear away this stabilizer. And it tears very easily, as you can see, because it has been perforated many times by the needle in the embroidery machine.
so that is garbage. Now, there is some stabilizer in here, but it's not really worth the effort. You could do it of tearing it all out from in here, but I'm not going to bother because it's going to give more stability to the stocking itself, and uh, it's not going to hurt anything. No one's going to see it. It's going to be buried inside. If you were to wash this, it wouldn't be a problem. It would hold together inside the sock. Uh, over time, if it had multiple, multiple washings, it would eventually just dissolve away. But um, you don't have to worry about that because this is something, this item is something that you probably will never wash. So we're going to trim a quarter of an inch all the way around from the outside line of stitching. And this is just a rough cut. It doesn't have to be exact. Just going all the way around the outside, the peripheral. There we have some fabric to sort out later for large scraps. Then we're going to take another pair of smaller scissors and we're just going to do a little bit of clipping. First of all, we're going to clip the corners just off at a 45 degree angle, being careful not to clip into the stitching. And then around on these curves, we're just going to make a little cuts up to the stitching but not cutting into the stitching. This will just make turning a little bit easier. So around the curved edges. This is why I'm using these scissors because they're very sharp and they're small so it's easy to get at this area to control your snips. And we'll do some around here on the heel. just around the curved areas so that we can push them out nicely when we get to that stage of it. Now comes the fun part. We've got to turn this all inside out and we're actually going to do two turnings. Remember that gap that the machine left right in here? This is the first turning. Now what do I have in my hand? I have hemostats. And hemostats are great for this kind of thing because they let you grab onto things and keep a hold of it. So this is a fairly stiff process. So there, I've got my hemostats on and now I'm going to pull it. And I'm just going to work the fabric without tearing stitches. It's fairly durable because it did a double stitch in many places. So we just keep working the fabric. It's kind of like birthing a baby. Well, maybe, I don't know. Never birthed the baby. So I'm birthing fabric here. Now it would be a little easier if I hadn't left all the stabilizer in it, but I want the stabilizer in there. So, and it's just patience. You just have to work at it. The hemostats do help a great deal. Okay, so I have what I can work with. Now we're just gonna push out corners and parts. I have a little uh, pushy bar. You could use a chopstick, uh, knitting needle, whatever. I like this. It's actually what it's meant for and it cost a lot of money, but I was a sucker. But actually, it does work very effectively because the problem with the chopstick or knitting needles, the end point may be a little sharp and you could poke right through your fabric and you don't want to do that. So I'm just working all of those curves and corners out. Again, just take your time with this. And I'm working this into that corner. I know that a lot of people hate this stage of it. Actually, I kind of a little bit, I find it a little bit therapeutic. 
Don't ask me why, because I don't know. Okay, I think I've got it all pressed out or pushed out. Oops, no, missed this cor corner at the top. Oops, here's my little, forgot to take my masking tape off. Well, we'll do that now. Just tuck that back in because we're not finished turning it out yet. But we do have to do one more thing. Let's try and get that corner out. Okay, you'll notice I have a hole in my lining right here. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold these two pieces in and you just want them to be folded in enough that when you put a stitch line through this, and you could do it by hand, but I'm going to do it by machine. Just manipulate it so it all is relatively neat. Doesn't matter if part of it is poking out because no one's going to see this. This is going to get turned into the inside of the sock. So there I have it there. And I'm going to take it over to the sewing machine right now. I'm going to stitch across it, and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. So I stitched it with the machine just along the edge. It's not perfect, but it's okay. It'll hold. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I stitch relatively close, about an eighth of an inch away from the edge. And now the final turn. And there's enough space you can put your hand in. You could use the hemostats again. But we're going to change, turn this whole thing inside out. This time it's a little bit easier because our hole is a little bit bigger. And we're going to go in and pop out the corners and the curves. Again, we may want to use our pokey tool. I can't tell if I'm in shot or not. I hope I am. And again, just take your time, work out all of the seams, all the edges. And just flatten it out. And there we are. Now, I'm not that happy about the backing because I got my fabric in the wrong order. I would have had rather have had um, this lining that's on this side in here on the outside, but that's okay, it will do. And I'm just using my fingers to flatten things out. And now I'm gonna take it over to my iron and give it a final press. And there we have the final version of the Christmas stocking done in the hoop with my embroidery machine. And it turned out pretty good. And as you can see, it really didn't take that long to make. So you can rattle off a pile of these and they'll be great with things stuffed in them for Christmas Day, chocolate, little toys, whatever you want with them. And you can personalize them with the person or the recipient's name if you wish. I just put Merry Christmas because everybody knows Merry Christmas, right?